When it comes to buying a smartphone today, there's only really two options, iOS or Android. 71% of smartphone users today have an Android phone. That's 3.5 billion people. Now, just about everybody knows how the iPhone was made. In fact, I made a whole video about it. But do you know how Android got made? It's a crazy story. It wasn't even supposed to be a competitor to the iPhone. That came later. So what happened? This is... All right, if you've seen any of my videos like ever, you know how weird phones were in the early 2000s. Besides the fact that they were all just so unique, an important thing about the phones of that time is that all the sales were driven by the carriers. Phones were typically sold only from one carrier. If you wanted an LG phone, you had to go through T-Mobile. If you wanted a Blackberry, you'd go through AT&T. You get the picture. Carriers kind of had free reign on the market. They decided what phones were sold and how much they sold for. It was kind of a flawed system. They created this walled garden, not unlike the one Apple has today. But one guy had an idea. This is Andy Rubin. He worked at Apple and then Microsoft in their hardware departments, and he had started his own company called Danger. He experienced firsthand how crazy this phone carrier monopoly was. His company created a phone called the Danger Sidekick, and when they managed to sell it to T-Mobile, it was rebranded, and they sold it as the T-Mobile Sidekick. The T-Mobile Sidekick. Unlimited servers for 30 bucks. The Sidekick ended up selling super well, but nobody knew the name of the company that made it. Ruben thought this was pretty wrong, and he started to develop the idea that would eventually become Android. What if software was open source? Then any manufacturer could use it. It would level the playing field. Then they wouldn't have to go through the carriers. With that idea brewing in his head, he started his new company. In 2003, Andy founded Android Incorporated, along with three other colleagues. Fun fact, the name Android was a nickname that Andy got when he worked at Apple. Android started off kind of directionless. They started by building software for digital cameras, but they quickly lost funding from a bunch of investors. So they quickly pivoted to smartphones, something they were all good at but they had already lost most of their money, and they almost got evicted from their office space. In 2004, Andy called up his buddy Steve Perlman. He said they didn't have enough money to continue his idea. Steve took pity on him and withdrew $10,000 in $100 bills and handed it to Andy on the spot. Later that week, he direct deposited an undisclosed amount into Android's account. It was enough money to pull them out of the low spot they were in, get a new office space, and start working on their phone prototype again. In 2005, Andy had a meeting in Google's offices. They asked him a bunch of cryptic questions about his product. Andy Andy later said he was unsure if they were sizing him up as competition or actually interested in his ideas. 45 days later, Google called him back, and this time it was pretty clear what they wanted. All four founders showed up and showed Google the design for the Android operating system, and Google made it clear they wanted to buy Android. Three of the four original founders thought it was a good idea, and five months later, Google had purchased Android for an estimated $50 million, and they had moved their office into the Google campus. This is the beginning of a new era for the team. They didn't have to worry about money or resources anymore. They had Googles, so they doubled down and got to work. Two thousand five also marks the year they switched their operating system to be Linux based. Linux is an open sourced computer software, and it would allow anybody that used it to edit and change it as desired more easily. This was exactly what they needed, and it also made developing a lot easier. They began work on completing the OS as well as hardware to put it on. Their first device was going to be called the Sooner, and it looks like this. The pitch was it was just a better open sourced BlackBerry, and it made sense at the time. While I was working on this video, Snazzy Labs posted a video on the Google Sooner, the first Android prototype. So if you want to learn more about that, check it out in the description below. Now remember, the iPhone hadn't come out yet. In fact, there was no such thing as a mainstream touchscreen device. The only touchscreens at the time were big, clunky, and hard to use. Apple were the only ones who knew this weird niche tech was the future. So naturally, Ruben wasn't worried about touchscreens. He was focused on his competition at the time, mainly BlackBerry and Windows OS, but also Symbian and Palm OS were doing their own thing in the background. So naturally, they were still working on a genuine competitor to the smartphones of the time, but something big was on the horizon. By now, the Sooner was pretty much done, but within Android, they weren't really sure if they wanted to ship it or not. I couldn't find a source that said like why they didn't want to ship it. I guess they just didn't think it was good enough. But then something huge happened. In fall of 2007, just a few months before they were supposed to ship the Sooner, the iPhone got announced. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. Yes, the iPhone was a revolutionary device that changed the face of tech forever, but it still had the original problem Android had set out to solve. It was locked to a carrier. According to Fred Vogelstein's book, 
Andy Rubin was in a car when it was announced. On the way to a meeting, he asked the driver to pull over so he could watch the iPhone keynote. He is then quoted as saying, holy crap, I guess we're not gonna ship that phone. Like I said, they were already thinking about canceling it, but this was the final nail in the coffin. Android had to totally scrap their plans and pivot and start developing something to take on the iPhone. They had to do it quick. And the craziest part is they had to do it from scratch. They had to start over. As you can imagine, it didn't go well. Android was already touchscreen compatible to an extent, but again, nobody had made a phone yet. If you're gonna make a successful operating system, there needs to be phones that run your operating system. Right around the time the Sooner was supposed to launch, they opened up Android for the public. Okay, there was literally no device that could run this new software, but developers had access to it to kind of modify it to their own liking and make apps for it. And then there's this quote from Eric Schmidt, the CEO at the time, and I don't know if he was on the same page or if this was before the Sooner was announced, but here's what he said. Today's announcement is more ambitious than any single Google phone that the press has been speculating over for the past few weeks. Our vision is that the powerful platform we're unveiling will power thousands of different phones models. Whoa, Eric, man, pump the brakes. He's hyping up their Google phone like it's the next big thing. Meanwhile, his whole Android team is backpedaling trying to restart the whole thing. 2007 was also the year that Android helped found the Open Handset Alliance to counter the carrier monopoly. The only reason I'm telling you this is because two of the companies that joined them were HTC and T-Mobile, and they're important partners in the story coming up. All right, so what do they do now? Like I said, at this point, Android is already behind and they haven't even started yet. It's a race against time. They have to make a phone that runs this new software and Google gives them a year. Make an entire phone with brand new technology in a year. So what do you do when you have to completely abandon a project and then get an even tighter deadline for a new one? A poor job, that's what. Just over a year later, they launched the T-Mobile G1, also known as the HTC Dream. This guy right here, check this out. That's pretty cool. So yeah, Android was out like a year before they made a phone that could actually run Android. So it's crazy for an OS to be out that long, but also a year isn't enough to actually make a good phone. So yeah, this phone is not great. It received mixed to poor reviews from the press. Overall, the keyboard was pretty good. The touchscreen was really bad and it didn't have a headphone jack. So basically it's a Blackberry with a really crappy touchscreen and no headphone jack. You can probably see why it didn't sell very well, but this was just a proof of concept. It became pretty clear that by far the coolest thing about this phone was the operating system. Android was amazing. It had a third party app store. Keep in mind, the iPhone at this point had only had an app store for two months. It was third party accessible, meaning any manufacturer could make an Android phone if they wanted to. Because they'd been working on a version of this software since 2003, the software was on par with the iPhone. It seemed like at this point, all Android had to do to catch up was make good hardware to go along with their fantastic software. And boy, did they. All right, 2009 was huge for Android. They released Android 1.2, 1.5, and 2.0, all huge updates that greatly improved the software. Obviously, to drum up hype and popularity, HTC made a bunch of phones with Android on them in partnership with Google. Thanks to the G1 showing that Android was pretty cool, other manufacturers were like, yeah, we should totally make Android phones too. This year, you had some absolutely banger phones come out, including the Motorola Droid, the LG Eve, and oh yeah, the first Samsung Galaxy. After a rocky start, Android had pulled through. They had managed to pivot and in just two years had caught up with the iPhone. The iPhone was one of the greatest technologies ever invented, but it took two years for Google to make a comparable competitor. That is some incredible turnaround. And the rest is history. iPhone maintained its market share in America, but everywhere else, pretty much everybody has an Android. They did it. Thank you to Juno Knight for being a member. You can check out all my socials down below and I have a bunch more videos just like this one. Party on dudes.